some years ago, I was riding in a car with a French friend and our boys taking a road trip from Paris. We started talking politics, and I cut loose with some complaining about the European Union. My friend surprised me by how vehemently he defended the EU, not on the basis of any kind of high idealism, but for one simple reason. It has kept the peace in Europe. Whatever the problems with the EU, he said, the fact that it has saved Europe from a third suicide attempt makes enduring these problems worthwhile. Arriving at our destination early that afternoon, the military cemeteries in Normandy, brought home my friend's argument with particular impact. It caused me, an American, to realize how very different history feels when war is fought not across an ocean, but in your own backyard. The EU has undoubtedly played a major role, and maybe even the leading role, in making European nations too integrated to make war on each other. Now, this is why the Catholic bishops of the European Union issued a statement not long ago intended to guide EU voters in the upcoming parliamentary elections. It's a fairly anodyne document, the sort of thing you, you're used to getting from, from churches. And it's intended to urge voters to support the EU and its goals for a unified Europe. Here's what the bishop said, and I apologize for the mushiness, but these are bishops. What is important is that we vote for persons and parties who clearly support the European project. We know that the European Union is not perfect and that many of its policy and legal proposals are not in line with Christian values and with the expectations of many of its people. But we believe that we are called to contribute and improve it with the tools democracy offers us. Blah, blah, blah. Now, but this dull statement takes on hard edges when you consider which political parties the bishops are telling voters not to choose. Those of the national conservatives, a catch-all term taking in the nationalist, populist, and sovereignist. This is insane. It's not the national conservatives who threaten Europe. It's the status quo that these churchmen support. As we know, three of the four founding fathers of what became the European Union were distinguished Catholic statesmen. Robert Schumann from France, Conrad Adenauer from Germany, and the Italian Alcide de Gasperi were all giants and faithful sons of the church. They dreamed of a Europe united through Christian democracy. In his book titled For Europe, Schumann wrote, quote, Democracy owes its existence to Christianity. It was born the day that man was called to realize in this temporary life the dignity of each human person, in his individual liberty and the respect of the rights of each, and by the practice of brotherly love to all. Never before Christ were such ideas formulated. Close quote. Yet Schumann, whose cause for sainthood is now underway, also wrote, quote, Democracy will be Christian or it won't exist. An unchristian democracy is a caricature which sinks into tyranny or anarchy. When Schumann, who was at the time the French foreign minister, made his famous 1950 declaration proposing the creation of a united Europe, he was speaking to and from a continent that was still recognizably Christian. Alas. The collapse of European Christianity in the post-war world is a depressing story that hardly needs elaborating here. According to research published a few years ago by the Catholic sociologist Stephen Bullivant, quote, Christianity as a default, as a norm, is gone, and probably gone for good, or at least in the next 100 years. He's talking about Europe. Now, this is not the fault of the European Union. Still, the EU acts as both a reflection of Christianity's collapse and as an accelerant to its demise. It is a terrible irony of history that the European project, launched primarily by faithful Catholic statesmen, has now become a key antagonist, indeed an enemy, to what remains of European Christianity. Take the sanctity of life. Earlier this month, the European Parliament voted to add abortion to the EU's 
Charter of Fundamental Rights. Now, the vote was mostly symbolic, but it is a clear signal of where the EU's governing class wishes to lead the entire union. More concretely, the European Court of Human Rights ruled last year that Poland's ban on eugenic abortions, thanks to a constitutional court ruling in that country, violated the human rights of Polish women. The Human Rights Court said that Poland's judicial reforms raised significant doubts about the legality of the ban. Along those lines, the European Parliament appealed to the European Commission to invoke the, quote, rule of law mechanism to suspend payments to Poland until and unless it legalizes abortion. The rule of law, we who live in Hungary know very well how, the, uh, how Brussels abuses that concept. Uh, we are likely to see more of this kind of thing, though, including around euthanasia, where European abortion and euthanasia advocates cannot achieve politically, they will seek to achieve by using the administrative power of the EU purse in Brussels. Why do the bishops support this barbaric system? Consider also the EU elite's anti-Christian views on the meanings of marriage, the family, and even the human person with regard to gender. In 2022, the European Commission referred Hungary to the European Court of Justice over a law meant to protect Hungarian children and minors from LGBT material in schools and media. The EU governing class considers Hungary's traditional Christian view of marriage family, and sexual morality to be anathema. Brussels will not rest until Hungarian children have the opportunity to be queered like other enlightened European children. And again, I have to ask, why do the bishops want us to vote for this system? On both issues of the sanctity of life and marriage and sexuality, EU policies clearly violate church teaching. But the greatest threat to Europe's survival is one in which the church is, sadly, on the same side as the EU elites, migration. Pope Francis unambiguously endorses open borders. Last fall in Mar Marseille, he called, on, he called any reference to a migration crisis in Europe nothing but, quote, alarmist propaganda. On an earlier occasion, referring to migration, he said that it is a sin, a sin, quote, to refuse the to encounter the other. You have to be blinded by sentimentality not to see how the migration crisis is tearing Europe apart. An open door migration policy has turned Sweden into Europe's gang war capital, Sweden. Its government is now deploying the army to try to restore law and order to what was just a short time ago one of Europe's most peaceful and stable societies. Many of these unassimilable migrants are Muslims. And let me be clear, no one, no one should ever despise or discriminate against another man for his religious beliefs. That humane principle, though, should not buy, uh, blind us to the immense difficulties integrating these Muslim migrants into European life. Since the October 7th Hamas attack on Israeli civilians, European capitals have seen appalling anti-Semitic demonstrations by Muslims and their left-wing supporters. In London, police have repeatedly been observed not combating the hateful mobs, but deferring to them, likely out of fear. You want to know one European capital that has not had to put up with this fanaticism and Jew hatred? Budapest, capital of a country that controls its borders, that has not allowed a large migrant community to take root. It often seems to me, as someone who lives in Budapest, that Hungary is almost, almost the only European country that takes preserving its culture seriously. The Hungarian government said the other day that it has no intention of abiding by the new EU migration pact. In European parliamentary debate about the legislation, Hungarian MEP Balas Hidvegi said that the debate is, quote, about whether or not we are able to preserve our European identity, our way of life, norms, culture, and traditions. He's right about that. The European Union is a supranational vehicle for globalism, sexual revolution, 
open borders, and indeed long-term Islamization. Why on earth are the Catholic bishops blessing this? In fact, if Europe is going to survive, and especially if the Christian faith is going to survive in Europe, voting for nationalist, populist, and sovereigntist has to be part of the solution. Now, few people in Europe want their countries to leave the EU. I get that. But it is urgent that the powers of Brussels and Strasbourg be rebalanced and restrained by reform that gives more authority to the nation states within the EU. Now, from a Christian point of view, nations like Hungary, whose people still have faith in Christian democracy, are places where the values of old Europe are still defended. It's true that politics alone cannot restore the Christian faith to Europe, but politics can create the conditions under which Christian life can continue and even be revived. In these dark days for European Christianity, voters should recognize what the Catholic bishops of Europe will not, that on the political front, the political front, the best chance the faith has lies with parties that advocate for decentralization away from Brussels and that defend national sovereignty. Europe needs a new Saint Benedict, a new Saint Boniface, a new Saint Gregory the Great, European men of the church who had courage and vision. By contrast, these churchmen today satisfy themselves by blessing the anti-Christian system that is leading to what Robert Schumann warned would be a tyrannical caricature of democracy. The Catholic founding fathers of post-war Europe believed that Christian democratic politics could help heal a continent wounded by war. Today, though, too many church leaders are content to be hospice chaplains blessing the euthanasia of European civilization. Finally, I would encourage these bishops to observe what is happening here in Brussels this week, indeed on this day in this hour. The leftists and uh, liberals who govern this city are trying to silence and ban us. This is the future of Europe they want for us. Wake up, open your eyes, live not by lies, including the lie that everything is going to be just fine for Christians in Europe if only we just keep quiet, keep our heads down, and conform. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rod.